Alright, it is day 23. I am on my way to the convention a week from today. So now, I got to a point where I can reveal some of my plan to you. And then we got to talk about something that, um, I want to show you guys something that, very important skill, one of the most important skills that, that you should uh, work with and learn. And I'm going to show you why in a second here. And you know, we're going to talk about clamping. And I'm going to show you some, uh, I'll show you why you need to get good at it in a second. But first, now, I can reveal some of the plan. So remember when I said these two SD45s, so they have a story to tell. All right, so what we got here we got this guy. He's got a little head. And he's got a big body. Right? He's got a big nose. A little head. And a big body. And he's orange. And he shall be called Ferdinand. Like an elephant. Kind of like an elephant. Alright. And his best friend is this guy who's got a who's got a big head but a smaller body. So his name is Mouse. Because elephant and mouse they're friends, right? And then they say the elephant they're scared of mice and so yeah there I know there were German tanks named Ferdinand and Mouse but that's not it it's, it's a story from when you're kids about elephant and mouse being friends and Ferdinand is a name for elephant I don't know exactly how that really came about other than I know the story of Ferdinand Porsche making making his elephant tank or something like that but it's Basically, it's Ferdinand the elephant and Mouse the mouse. Okay? They're best friends. That means, in the lineup, they got to appear next to each other. And that's how they're going to be. And it's gonna, they're going to have their names on their side. Like, some railroads name their locomotives. Lots of name them after cities and things. These two are going to be named Ferdinand and Mouse. So that's kind of where we're going at. And this one over here, the blue one is going to be giant. Because one time I couldn't think of a name for a blue locomotive where I used this paint that I liked. And I called it giant because I had a big giant space on the side to put giant in giant letters. So that's what we're going to do. It's going to be giant. All right. So that's destroyed. And it's going to unfold. And guess what? As you can see, primer is happening right now out in the sun. The two ten shotos are baking. They're primered and they're baking. I think today we may get to paint somebody. And maybe we get to paint everybody. That'd be cool if we did. But it's it's not even ten o'clock yet, and I started at three forty five this morning. Cause I got excited and I couldn't sleep. Motivation is coming up. Because when you start to see the big picture here. Brings my motivation up. I mean, I told you guys it was it was gonna go down, and I was gonna have to dig deep to bring myself up again. That's just the nature of doing a project like this. And when you hit that bottom, then you want to somehow you got to find a way to keep going, and you got to keep putting the puzzle together. I'm gonna tell you, doing these cabs since. I had to cut the windows for them in advance. I think I already told you that. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Cutting all the windows for these things in advance was really, really testing my faith on this thing. Putting these together, the two thin wall cabs, also tested my faith because they're so flimsy. And I had not used these particular ones before. They're terribly flimsy. Whereas this one... This one is look 
it's like working with giant plastic chunks. It has its own problems. All right, now I want to talk about clamping. Remember when I said that if you can clamp it, you can mill it? Well, that doesn't apply just to clamping. Um, oh, yeah, let me show you my little first. Let's zoom in on old Ferdinand here. Okay, for right now all you can see is a blue line. This is a slope here. So as I found when I did that DD40 project where I did this same high nose and cab combination, you need to slope this, and I haven't totally finished uh, making it look just the way I want. It's got to slope good so that it comes into the cab, and not so that it matches, but it's got, if you want to have a small head and a big nose and a big body, it makes the body look bigger to have this thing slope into the cab. It makes the body look like like that cab behind it is a very big, powerful body. So that's, that's kind of an important feature. I noticed that when I did the other one. The other one, I, I did that just I'm trying to make it match. And then I noticed, you know, it, it makes it look a lot stronger when you do that. So I did that. All right, now let's talk about clamping. So, let me pull up. I have a cheap bench vise. They don't get any cheaper than that right there. It's like 40 bucks. You used the, I got a Harbor Freight, and I think I might have used a 40% off coupon back when they had them. So I didn't pay very much for it. It ain't super accurate, super wobbly. Um, but hey, that's, that's what's in my budget. So that's what I got. You have to make do. A very wise man, and He's a machinist on YouTube, really famous one, Frank Hoos. And he's the one that, uh, I asked him a couple years ago, what would be, to get my milling machine set up, what would be the minimum amount of stuff I would need? And he gave me a recipe for it. And it took me a while to save up, and then I, and I was able to buy it. And with, with the bare minimum stuff that I need for it. And then, as I learned more about it, and his advice, uh, learn how to clamp. If you can clamp it, not only can you mill it, you can file it and you can work with it. So I have spent a bunch of time now during this build making tools. Okay, these are just wood, but they're tools. These have certain widths, and I had to make these um, to fit all of the different body styles that I'm working with so that I could clamp solidly. And then I had to make some to clamp the sides and some on inside, so they got certain lengths and widths to them so that I can clamp without wrecking stuff. Um, and I'm going to show you as I found out. It's important. This costs you no money, right? You can use regular old uh, these. Here, I'll show you clamp. See, see these? These are like two bucks. They're like two dollars. In fact, you can get these at the dollar store sometimes, and they're clamps. But making different ways of holding a piece solidly without wrecking it, keep your little scraps wherever you find them. Put it, I've, got a, I've got a box full of these little scraps like this that I can go to, and when I'm working on a project, then I will cut these to match whatever it is I need to clamp, because they're really important. And I'm going to show you where I got into trouble here. I had to build an extension on this high hood, just enough to um, to clear the front end. I had, I had to, I needed just a little bit, otherwise it would have been way too short and it would be running up against that, and I didn't want to mill that out. And then when I was trying to square it, I... I used a block that I made to sit in here, and then I had some blocks for the sides, and I had a special one because it had, it's got grab irons on already, but it also has some details, and it's not flat on one side. And I needed to, I didn't want to file around this edge because I didn't think I could make it square. I didn't think I could get it square, so I, I clamped it and I put it in a mill. Unfortunately, I screwed up. Now it is not square. 
And that means either I have to build up something or I got to take something off. I'm going to have to make a new, basically a jig, but I'm going to, I'm going to make new tools. And I'm going to make a new tool to somehow square this. And that's going to take me a while, and, but I'll get to it and we'll get it, we'll get it knocked out and get it in there. But that little screw up, um, that cost me several hours. That was not good. That's why I see the importance of being able, having some materials on hand that you can use for clamping and then making, like you can, you can cut these, you can, you can use a handsaw and you can clamp this down to the surface and build yourself some kind of fence. You can shave a little bit off, even with a hand tool. You can do that. And that's really important. Now, I successfully did it on this. This was a high nose that I had to cut down. And so I made a tool so that I was able to cut this with the razor saw. And it turned out, it turned out exactly the way I wanted it to turn out. It's not too bad. A little more filling and a little more primer. And then, and then it will be, that guy will be ready. But that turned out just right because I had done a good good work on making the tool for it. Alright, I gotta get back to it. Now hopefully I can um, I'm now getting pretty motivated that I think I can give you some more frequent updates. Uh, also here here's some aluminum bar stock. Then one time I had a sale in the hardware store and I bought one stick of it. It was like ten bucks. And so I got it. All I did was I cut this off with a handheld hacksaw and um, I got that Harbor Freight the three inch grinder with the buffer on it that's it's like 39 bucks for one of the best tools ever I use it several times every day and I made it you know, smooth it off with the buffer and so now I've got little blocks here that can be useful for holding things and as you know on the workbench here all of those nuts lined up there I have emptied the bench with those things many times, holding stuff, clamping stuff, lining stuff up. That's why they've been there. And that's not even enough. I could use a few more. I could use another one of those great big ones. But uh, that's why I've got them all lined up there. They're so useful. Right now, I'm using one to hold the, hold the super glue up so I can, uh, I can glue stuff. And don't have to set it down like I did on, on the other tube of super glue. And it all leaked out all over the place. Terrible. All right. That's where we're at. Motivation is, is getting pretty high. I'm really getting excited to get the paint. Once the paint goes on, then, then motivation will get really high.